Hello. It's a uh, beautiful sunny day on the Yukon here, although this morning it was raining a little. Um, but uh, we got a beautiful day for cutting fish, and that's what I'm going to be talking about again here. This is the, uh, I've done a dog food cutting video, I've done a uh, how to make fish strip video, and today uh, I'm going to do the third type of uh, uh, fish that we cut, and that's uh, what is called dry fish. Uh, some people call them edibles. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what's on the rack behind me. These things, uh, these things were cut yesterday, and we uh, had enough sun that they got a nice glaze on them. They're starting to dry, and, uh, and they're pretty tricky to cut. They're, they're, what, uh, they're cut in the fall time like now. This is the, the very beginning of the fall when the, uh, the kings have stopped migrating up the river, and now the next run, the fall chum, uh, starting to migrate up the river there. And uh, to many people, uh, myself included, they're probably the most important fish on the Yukon. And uh, we've been lucky to have no troubles uh, with them all these years. There's little ups and downs, natural ups and downs, uh, but uh, there's been no uh, overfishing or, you know, there's been no uh, real problems with them. And uh, what it is is they're, the, they're how we feed our dogs and they're also how... Uh, they're a main food supply for people food also, so they're a very important food fish for us. And I'm going to go through uh, a couple of different techniques on how to uh, do it. Uh, an old traditional method that uh, we still use around here at the camp, and then uh, I've, uh, I've got some, uh, uh, anybody that likes to uh, see my inventions and stuff like that, uh, you know, all the little things that uh, they usually drive my family nuts with this kind of stuff, you know, it's, I, I'll, I'll spend all this time developing some way to do something different, you know, and uh, half the time they don't work out and uh, they just get thrown away. But this one is, I've been cutting all my fish this way so far and, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see what the family thinks of it when I, but regardless, we'll go through the technique. And even when you see this new way I, I got to cut uh, these things, uh, it'll show you what we're, what, what, what we're trying to do, the technique behind this, because they are tricky fish to cut, and they're being cut at a time of year when there isn't as much sun, the sun's starting to decrease, and the weather's starting to get a little cooler. Uh, today's a beautiful day, like I say, and even this wind is really important to drying this fish. Um, you need the sun, you need the wind. Uh, we got an old... Uh, uh, one of the elders down in town, uh, the traditional chief of town, uh, Lester, uh, my buddy down there, he uh, he says when you're cutting these things, if you don't have sun that first day, they're never going to be as good as, uh, you know, that's a, a key thing is having sun on the day you cut them. You won't even cut when it's uh, not sunny. So, okay, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, get on with that and uh, start showing you. We're going to show you the smokehouse uh, and, and get into a little more of the operation of it. People have asked. I've shown my smokehouse before on videos and stuff, and uh, we're gonna, uh, but I've never really talked too much about the operation of it and stuff, so we'll do a little of that too. So, okay, good. Okay, now we're going to uh, do this Two different method to each one of these fillets here. First thing you got to do though is you got to rib them and you got to do that no matter what type of method you're using and uh, get those rib bones off. Um, like I say that's something you don't do if you're cooking dog food or um, cutting dog food, yeah, you just, uh, the dogs uh, do just fine. That's dog food. That's going to go up on this rack right behind me. I'll show you that stuff. Uh, that's what I feed the dogs this time of year. Um, I don't cook dog pots uh, in the fall hardly, um, once in a while, but most of the time they're just eating all the byproducts of, uh, of cutting these edibles. There's, uh, 
there's byproducts of king salmon too but like the rib bones and stuff but uh, you'll see I'm gonna be cutting a big slab off of these fish and it's a, it's an appreciable amount of flesh and you can use it for canning and and uh, whatever dry it some people dry it in their smoke houses and stuff like that but I'm gonna cut uh, I'm gonna catch and cook dog food if I don't dry this stuff so it doesn't really matter the dogs are going to be eating chum salmon and it's just uh, an easier thing to do uh, with the slabs that come off here although a lot of our canned fish is, is made out of them but there's only so much you can uh, there's only so much fish you can use canned so we're going to uh, take this guide this guy it's just a couple of pieces of wood thing on it there, um, screws, um, and it's this thick, and I have another one over here that I use in uh, uh, worse weather, like if it's really rainy or something and you still want to keep trying to put them up, this just uh, takes uh, more of a slab off, and so there's less fish to uh, dry, less fish to sour, less fish to worry about, and uh, it dries faster, and uh, so that's my bum weather one. If you use this one, you really have to, like when I use that one, I don't even worry about this stretching of the fish that I'm going to show you and make such a big deal about. But if you use this thicker thing, you have to somehow stretch the fish. You, uh, If you like your fish sour, which some people like it sour. I mean, some people don't care. Um, I've eaten lots of that too, but I care and I bother with this fish and uh, um, you know, I give it to a lot of different kinds of people, and uh, and so, you know, I like the fish to be not rotten. So. Okay, so, uh, so the first method is, this is the traditional method, it's simply to make cuts. And when you make the cuts, you don't want to make them too narrow because then they'll fall on top of each other when you hang them up vertically. And you don't want to make them too wide because then they won't dry. So this, this is what I make them about like this. You know. And when I do it, I'm not doing it with a cutting motion so much a little bit. It moved, The knife moves a little bit, but it's kind of a push down with a little bit of a slide. You don't want to be cutting it. If you do, if you if you're really just cutting it, you're going to cut through that flesh, and and by and when you get to that skin on the other side, you're just going to cut right through, and you don't want to do that because that's the strength of your fish. You need that skin intact. So, like I say, this is pretty fast. If I'm not filming and showing things, you know, you just, you can whip this out pretty, pretty fast. The other method is a little slower, but, uh, so what I do now is I take this knife and here, I always leave on a little bit of the collar of the, uh, fish up by the head and it's really thick and strong. So you can take your knife and you can hold it like that and you can stretch and and you can see those those cuts just opening up when I stretch it like that that's what you want any place where it's touching tomorrow when I go through all my fish after they get a little bit of a glaze I'll go through all my fish and any place where it's touching I have to take a scissors and I can show you that too. Uh, make a few cuts on some fish and show you the scissors thing but uh, uh, because if this fish is touching like that, if you cut into it and you expose that flesh and you get bacteria in there, which instantly gets in there, and then that fish dries together like that, when you open that up, it's just going to be all sour in there. And so you don't want, you want all those things opened up nice, and if they're not opened up nice, the next day you want to do it. Uh, and open it up like with a scissors or something like that by cutting off the flesh that's touching. So that's the traditional method. And some people do things like they take the 
skin like this and they run the back of the knife over it and they just do it really hard uh, I don't like that because it uplifts the scales a lot and the flies lay eggs in the scales and and uh, and some people take the blade of their knife I can't, it just drives me nuts when I see it and they'll take it and they'll run it over the thing like that and I just all I can think of is as much care as it takes to get a nice uh, razor edge on a knife uh, how fast that razor edge is getting uh, destroyed by doing that but um, so anyway now the next method next method here we'll uh, cut a slab off this and you cut towards cut towards the back not towards the belly if you do cut this way you're going to crimple up the fish or whatever and anyway no big deal okay so now I'm going to show you my uh, uh, fully adjustable automatic uh, fish stretching system. That's the new name I just gave it. And uh, I've had a number of a number of different methods in the past, and a couple of people around here. Everybody's got some sort of way of stretching the fish, and uh, and this is just something. Uh, I, I usually get pretty complicated, and my wife uh, drives my wife nuts when she sees what I did to her cutting table. Uh, I'm always messing around with her cutting table. Uh, she'll, uh, you know, I got this wire here that holds this file and this pole, and uh, and it's uh, like a hinge thing. I put the fish under here. It's got a, a weight on there, just a pulley for a weight, and. Uh, and a little wire here for so what needs to be done is something needs to be done that will hold the fish like that and it doesn't have to be this it can be anything you make up some people uh, have a, a block with a bunch of nails and they have the uh, and they dig it down into the flesh and it destroys a little flesh though and but then they got to pull on it at the same time with their hand, and they're cutting like that. And, and uh, you know, people use different methods. I like this one. This is how I'm cutting all my fish this year. I got a, a hook, just a just a piece of whatever, and uh, put that on there. Then I have a 10-pound weight, and uh, and it's got a nylon string. And I lay it over the table like that, and it stretches the fish. Yep. So, that making cuts. And you can see, and every time you make a cut, it opens right up, and the fish actually stretches a little bit more. And you can be real accurate. And you can use both hands and, and just take your time. You're not applying tension at the same time you're cutting and rushing it, you know. And uh, that's why I didn't like about all the other methods I've, I've used. So, we got it all cut. And final thing, let's see, I did start to have a little trouble with that last section there. That was ripping off a little. And then finally just give it a stretch. And those cuts open right up, just like on the other method. Yep. Take the hook off. You're done. You know, it's uh, not too much different, but uh, to me, the accuracy and the um, and the ease with which I can stretch it, it's worth messing with the jig. 
Okay, this is a uh, smudge fire, and it's to keep uh, flies away from the uh, fish while it's doing its initial drying. This is this is right after we get it hang, hung up. Um, it's very rarely windy enough to keep the flies off uh, by itself. So we gotta, you know, get a little pot or people use different things and just burn um, cottonwood and leaves and different anything just to, uh, you know, you don't want to put spruce in there. It's the same as in the smokehouse. You want to use something that's, you know, good smoke for the fish. But, uh, yep, and just let the fish... Uh, sit out and dry a little because uh, right now they're real susceptible to flies uh, once the things get a coat they're kind of bomb proof you know and if you have the uh, um, you know, like down on the beach here so down on the beach right in the middle of the uh, camera there it's uh, late in the day now and the sun's starting to leave this uh, north shore and so I moved the fish down the beach uh, from uh, that's those are fish from yesterday and they're going to go in the smokehouse here tonight and this is their last chance to get sun so I get about two more hours of sun down on the beach there and it's really nice and windy so they're getting a good glaze on them down there and then they'll go in the smokehouse and uh, stay there for most of their two or three weeks that it takes them to uh, get good and dry and uh, maybe if you get some damp weather I might pull everything out of the smokehouse and hang them on these outside racks and stuff like that you, it's uh you're always playing with these things like i say they're they're not as carefree as uh fish strips and they uh certainly are not as carefree as my dog food sitting down there um that stuff uh get a little glaze on them and uh cover them up and uh and you don't even worry about them anymore Okay, here's uh, yesterday's fish. Like I say, this uh, this used to be this fish here used to be a fillet like that, and I just cut it right down the center, and that just exposes the center part there, uh, which is the thickest, to the sun and the uh, drying and and all that. And uh, yeah, they're drying all nice. Yeah, and these things have all been uh, have all been cut. Like I'll, I'll get some scissors here and I'll show you. Now I'm going to show you how you handle this fish if you get like a touch in section. I've already done these, so it's uh, not really. Uh, but let's just say, let's just say that this fish, this piece here was touching that piece, that they were kind of together like that. And this is, this is what I do. These, all these have been cut. I've gone through all these and made a lot of cuts. What you do is take the scissors and take off a little piece of fish like that where it's touching. Same with here. Take off a little piece of fish like that. Because anywhere where it's touching, is gonna sour and if you like sour fish that's fine but you know if you get bad weather it could be more than just sour it could be almost uh, it could be just plain rotten fish and uh, again some people like rotten fish I mean it's just a, a taste thing it's just like cheese you know some people like uh, like blue cheese or something you know I, I can't stand blue cheese you know I won't even eat anything that has it on it. It's, uh, but I, I love cheese and I love yogurt, and all that. But that's all cured, soured, you know, stuff. That's I guess some people would say it's rotten. You know, well this stuff's the same same thing. This is in a, a process of curing, and if it cures slow and in the sun and uh, gets lots of air and there's no places touching where it's getting all you know bacteria in there and rotting um, you know it's it's a it's a good kind of cure taste you know and uh, to me and uh, uh, but if, it, if it's rotten it just it just changes the uh, 
I mean, it'll all dry and it'll all be edible. And uh, like I say, some people love. Uh, I've had people uh, love to eat the stuff on my dog racks, you know, and uh, they think that's just fine, you know. Um, but uh, to each their own. But I'm just telling you, you don't want anything touching. It's going to ruin your fish. And uh, especially if, it, if it's beautiful weather, you can get away with murder. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's not usually beautiful weather for the entire fall season. Okay, here's the uh, smokehouse. Um, this is the uh, smoke stove, and right now it's, uh, well, it's a pretty windy day. There aren't many flies around, and uh, there's not a lot of smoke coming out of here, but really, normally, there isn't too much more smoke coming out of that thing. You just want to fill the thing up with, uh, you know, enough smoke that you're, after a couple weeks, the fish is going to have a good smoke taste to it. And it doesn't take much. Right now, this stove, I can touch it. Um, it's uh, a little hot right there, but like I say, the, the oil isn't even burning off on it. And uh, yeah, we gotta put a little little wood in there. And it's just uh, smoldering cottonwood. Um, just keep it, keep it going 24 hours a day. And uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. And it's a cold smoke. It's not a hot smoke. Uh, you don't want, um, you know, if, if I was trying to smoke the fish in one day, like uh, what they call kippered salmon or hot smoked salmon, um, you'd want a lot of smoke. But, uh, yeah, at night I'll close it up here. I'll show you, I'll show you the, the, the smokehouse is... Uh, smokehouse is pretty much empty um, it's uh, three tiers bottom tier and then two more tiers up there and it has a window or a piece of tin left out on the side which uh, which I can take and raise up the top like that close it up like at night I'll close both sides and I'll close the door and in the daytime morning I come out here when the sun comes up I'll open them up and let the air all in. At night when the damp air is out there and stuff like that or on a rainy day close everything up. So like I say I got a I got the same thing on the other side just a piece of tin missing and those are the fish from two days ago these things are getting nice and nice and hard the, the slots are opening up even more because the fish is all drying and uh, that's what you want and, uh, and it's starting to like like this one here is just dripping oil fish oil. See, these one, this is like a belly section here and that's uh, they're usually richer than the back. Get two halves of the of the fish see and the, the back meat is not as rich as the belly meat. That's why people always like the belly sections you know. Some people will trade you know when they when you're bartering or trading or maybe selling uh, a few of these to your friends or something. Um, you know, some people will say, I want some bellies, you know, I'll pay extra for them, or I'll, you know, it's just, and, uh, and, and that's what I prefer to eat, too, you know, it's the rich stuff. Everybody does. Yep, so that's what's happening. Yeah. So hopefully those ones I just cut will be in here and doing good like this, and you know, and like I say, it's a light smoke. It's it's not it's not a it's not a lot of smoke. It's just after sitting in here for a couple of weeks, the fish is going to be smoked. As a matter of fact, sometimes you have a problem with it, it kind of tasting too smoky. So you know, you, it, it's not a heavy smoke. 
So that's uh, that's all I can think of for uh, cutting dry fish. And uh, you know, like I say, I have uh, a video on how to cut dog food and a video on how to cut fish strips. And um, and there are other people who uh, make videos uh, along the Yukon. His guy down river. Uh, I've seen a bunch of his videos and he makes one on how to cut this same dry fish and it may be good to watch that one. Uh, his name's Yukon Jeff. I'm sure just uh, search on uh, YouTube you'll find him. And uh, he's from the lo lower river where there's it's a different climate down there and the fish are richer and things are done a little differently and everybody does things differently anyway. And, the, the way to learn is just to watch everybody. That's how I, uh, uh, every, everything I'm doing is an accumulation of uh, multiple people. It's, it's not just any single thing and, and then I try a bunch of things. And, and uh, you know, it's just, it's, uh, these are really good skills. I, I want my kids to, no matter what they do in life, I want them to know how to, how to do this. Because if anything ever happened and uh, there was a need to, uh, uh, you know, get through a, a bad time or something and uh, put up some dry fish and put up some, you know, moose meat, fish, food for your dogs, just whatever, you know. Um, you know, you have to know how to preserve food. It's, uh, it's, it's just a basic, essential thing uh, in some circumstances. And, uh, and out here, it's just life, you know. It's, it's what we do every single year, every single year for since I've been here, since 1973 when I came here, I have every single year put up uh, dry fish for the dogs, for myself. Um, you know, you, you have to you have to do it. It's a way of life, but it, it's just a good skill to uh, for anybody to learn. And, uh, all my kids know how to do this stuff, and uh, and I really wish uh, I could uh, get my family to do this. Uh, it's another video where. I'm doing it by myself because uh, it's hard to do this when you get kids running around and people wanting to cut fish and everybody's all, you know, so that's why I do these things by myself. But uh, uh, I want to do, uh, one of the next videos is like do a family video, not necessarily show exactly how to do something and the techniques and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, that's really hard to do with a lot of people around, but uh, you know the family's going to be coming up here soon, and uh, we're going to be doing some fishing uh, now that the fall chum run has started. And, uh, um, I'd like to just get a video of just the family, kind of a fun, fun videos. So thank you very much, and uh, hopefully we can keep putting these videos on.